Hey, good morning, Transit. We're so glad you could be joining us online today. My name's Ryan, and I'm so thankful that I get the opportunity to hang out with you uh, from wherever you're coming from. And, uh, you know, I wanted to start this, this off today by telling you about something that I read this week that I think you'd like to hear. It's about the power of words. And here's what it says. Words have the power to help, to heal, to hurt, to harm, to humiliate, and to humble. And I started thinking about this, uh, this quote because, you know, oftentimes I don't stop to reflect on the power that my words actually hold. And if I had to guess, I would imagine that you feel the exact same way. And as I started reading through this quote, you know, a couple of things stuck out to me. You know, obviously words have the power to hurt. That's something that all of us can relate to. I'm sure you can relate to that yourself. Even as you sit at home, you know of people that have hurt you by the words that you've used. Perhaps it was a sibling, perhaps it was somebody at school, uh, maybe it was even a parent, but you are carrying some sort of weight of hurt from something that somebody has said. In the same way, you know that words can be healing or uplifting and encouraging because you have also had somebody say something encouraging to you. And it's because the words that we use hold so much power that it's so important to understand how to use them. Luckily, we are not the first person to ever navigate this. Paul actually navigated it as well. If you're not familiar with Paul, he lived right after Jesus did. And he actually dedicated his entire life to traveling around and telling people about Jesus. He also spent his entire life starting churches. So basically what Paul would do is he would travel to a city, live there for two or three years, meet people, tell them about Jesus, start a church, and then move on to the next city. And uh, one of the places that he did this was Ephesus. Ephesus is a city in modern day Turkey. And um, basically what he did was he went and lived there for three years, met people, started a church, and then moved on. And uh, in a letter that he actually wrote to the church that he started in Ephesus later in his life, he talks about the power that our words have. The letter we now know as Ephesians, but that's only because the people that lived in Ephesus at the time were known as Ephesians. So this is what Ephesians 4.29 says about the power of words. It says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful to building others up so that it may benefit those who listen. Now, this is a really interesting topic, and I want to draw your attention to two things. The first is the word unwholesome. Now, you may be unfamiliar with unwholesome, uh, or you may have a general sense of what it exactly means. But basically, unwholesome means harmful. Now, unwholesome are words that, that you have experienced in your life that have hurt your feelings. Unwholesome could be bad words that your parents don't want you to say. There's a wide variety of things that fall under this umbrella word, unwholesome, but you kind of get the idea. The second word that I want to draw your attention to is the word any that, becomes, that comes right before the word unwholesome in this verse. Because Paul doesn't leave anything in the grave for us. Any is a word that's absolute. And in this context, any means zero, nothing, none. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. But rather, Paul says, only what is good for building those around you up, that it may benefit those who hear it. And so I want to challenge you today to use your words to build those around you up. To build up those around you so that you can be known as an encourager, so that you can be known as somebody that is positive and that helps those around you get better. This is something that we can all take into our lives and apply today. We can take into our lives the idea to build others up, not to tear them down. And this is not easy. It doesn't come naturally and it takes hard work. But wouldn't you like to see what could happen in your friend group, in your school, even in your family, if you took this seriously? Thanks for joining us this week in transit. We will see you soon.